Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my interactive Space Engineers series where you tell me what to build and I build it. Now I can't begin to list the number of people that have suggested this week's ship as it's been the most popular thing ever requested for the series and I've finally gotten around to building it. Now right now what we're looking at is an Avocet Advanced Fighter. It is pretty long ranged and it's now been fitted with oxygen systems so that you can breathe easily. But if you think about it, this ship can expel all of its ammo at a target as well as use up all of its fuel and its oxygen supplies and it needs to be refuelled somewhere and may be repaired as well if it takes a few hits. So this week I have been working on this. This is the Avocet's nest carrier. Whilst building it the concept was to make a ship that was modular with a repeating structure that could accommodate as many hangars as were desired by those who requested it. And the idea again was based on real world scenarios such as how the Royal Navy built aircraft carriers in the UK. This carrier is built mostly out of light armour blocks to reduce weight with blast door ribbing to provide resilience in the event of a collision. Main flight deck is also built out of blast door blocks as they do not warp or bend when they come into contact with another entity and this is an incredibly useful function when landing ships on it as it means that you don't have to constantly repair any damage caused by the landing. With the landing strip itself being 300 meters long, it can easily accommodate many crafts such as one of Kemalar's large heavily armoured frigates, two vault shift utility craft and however many small ships you can fit in the space at the back. As stated at the beginning, this carrier is built with the Avocet in mind and it features 16 fully pressurised mini hangars built specifically for Avocets. With 8 on each side, these hangars are fitted with landing gear and connectors to hold the Avocet in place during flight and to refuel it. The functions of each individual hangar can be controlled by this console which sits behind it on the walkway that leads to each one. Each button has a different function. The first one opens the main hangar bay doors to allow the ship to fly out. The second one locks the interior doors to prevent them from being opened accidentally and then depressurizing this deck. The third button locks the floor mounted landing gear to hold the Avocet in place and the fourth one releases it and it's built in this way as the Avocets do not have sets of landing gear themselves. Between the Avocet hangars and the landing strip we have the main deck which carries all of the ship's vital systems such as power plant with emergency capacitor bank, oxygen storage, cargo storage with oxygen generation systems as well as crew quarters. Given that large ships have no interior decoration blocks to create true cabins, I left the space mostly empty. Furthermore, this ship being over 300 meters long and very large, I wanted to avoid using blocks with high poly counts to improve system performance. And this has been an issue with this ship as to film this episode I've had to lower some of the game settings to get an acceptable frame rate. I also recommend running this ship on a very powerful computer as it will be very laggy otherwise. Whilst the main bridge of this ship is also rather sparse in terms of equipment, it does feature 360 degree panoramic views of the surrounding area which is good for navigation purposes. On top of that above the bridge we also have sets of communication arrays which include beacons, laser antennas and standard antennas. So it would be relatively easy to control other ships nearby that are equipped with remote control systems. For protection running along the main landing strip we have multiple rocket pods that will fire at any enemies that come within 800 meters of the ship and these are likely to act as a good deterrence in the event that all fighter craft have been deployed. One of the major factors I took into consideration whilst building this ship was the oxygen system. Each room can be hermetically sealed individually to prevent the entire ship from being depressurized by a single breach. What's more, there are numerous airlocks to enter and leave safely and plenty of vents to maintain air supply. While staying on the subject of maintaining air supplies and seals, I've returned to what I was working on last week with an improved docking system. Instead of a convoluted system which involved grinders, welders and projectors, we now simply use airtight hangar doors which can create a corridor that is technically sealed off from the rest of space, even if it doesn't appear to be. To dock safely and securely, simply align the ships where the merge blocks meet, close the airtight hangar doors on both ships to create the corridor and then open the doors to fill it with air. This docking system will now become a standard on all my future large ships and stations and the Trident commercial cruiser from last week has already had it retrofitted and this will remain the standard until there is an improved way of doing it, perhaps released by the developers in the future. 
Let me know what you thought of the Avocet's Nest Carrier in the comments section below and be sure to leave any ideas for future ships or improvements to this ship there too. As always, this will be available for download on the Steam Workshop as well as an updated version of the Avocet Advanced Fighter and the Trident Commercial Cruiser from last week. If you're enjoying this series, be sure to leave a like, favourite, comment and subscribe as it does encourage me to make more episodes and I will see you next week. Take it easy, have a good day, bye bye.